Final match of the afternoon and evening session here in Class 2A, Fowler Grizzlies against the Yuma Indians. This goes back into pool number three. Yuma in the same situation we just had with Sangre de Cristo. They need a win to stay alive. They lost to Yuma in four, stretching Yuma, or uh, they lost to Simla in four, and stretching the Cubs to a fourth game is something no team had done in their last 17 matches. Simla had only dropped four sets all year. They gave one up to Yuma, but in game two, Yuma won that, and then Simla took control in games three and four. Here we have a Fowler Grizzly bunch that uh, is undefeated going into regionals a year ago. Battled some illness that day, lost to Swink. Missed a chance at the state tournament, so I know they're chomping at the bit to be here. They are a wild card. They would have definitely been a wild card a year ago had this format been in place last year. But last year you had uh, four regionals and the top two teams went in two state. A little different format. Yuma again, 16 and 10 with that loss now to Simla. Fowler at 18 and 7. They finished third in the Santa Fe League. Trailed Swink by three games and Rye by one, but they beat both those teams during the regular season. They beat Swink in the district tournament, but then turned around and lost to the Lions in four. At regionals last week, bounced back to defeat Sanford in three, and that earned them a wild card berth, the number one slot in the wild card division, and into the state tournament. We'll talk about their great tradition here as the match moves along get caught up on some of these players as Fowler gets the first point of the match and now we are tied. That is Tara Traffigan, number 13. We didn't have her in her roster, but we got help from a, a viewer, Steve Winger, earlier on today. Gave us help with her and Logan Hickson. Back to serve here is uh, Caitlin Murphy. Or Hanson, rather. That was Hanson with the serve. And she'll push it over. And that's Fowler, or uh, Moss rather, with the hit for Fowler. That one blocked at the net, kept alive. Good job by the India. Oh, nope, they award the point there to Fowler. Let's get you some numbers here for the Grizzlies. You have Lindsay Moss, number six. That's the coach's daughter, Sandy Moss. Lexi Bitter, number 15, is the server. Nicole Wagner, number two, she is your libero. We'll pick up a couple of more numbers here early on. Traffigan with the big hit, dug out there by Wagner. And over the top and long is Brianna Hobby. She is a freshman. Moss a junior, Hobby a freshman, Wagner a junior, Lexi Bitter a freshman. Boy, they're young. Also out there is Mariah Shields. She's a junior. And Jocelyn Sali is a junior as well. Number nine. That's Sali in the middle off the block. It's saved by Meckelberg. Actually must have a net call there. So Fowler gets the point in the one point lead early. Fowler has 13 state championships in their history, including three straight recently from 2008 to 2010. They also won in 2005. They had one, two, three, four, five, six during the decade of the 90s and only three <laughs> in the decade of the 80s. Pushed across there by Shields. Far side. That was Murphy, I believe. And Yuma rotates in quite a few players. We'll do our best to keep up with the numbers. That's Shields. Hanson over to Murphy and down. Good job there by Caitlin Murphy, number 15. She's the junior. Played well. All these Indians played well against Simla earlier. They just kind of fell short in game four. They lost it 25-14. Sally to the floor. Make that Moss down to make that save. Now she'll send it across, and, and they call a hitting error there. New face. Well, that's Lexi Bitter. Sandy Moss, the head coach of Fowler, told us we'll run into rough stretches, but our girls will play hard. Again, they're extremely young. Yuma's not a veteran club by any stretch. Again, 
They list 16 players on their roster here for the program. Only one's a senior. Two that are not on the roster are freshmen, and they play considerable amount of time. One of them there. Nope, check that. That's Balky. Far side. That one's long. Off the arm of Mariah Shields. So Yuma getting a 7-3 lead there. With that, here's traffic in the freshman. She'll send it on the serve. Middle. Again, I'm not sure what the call there was. Lindsey Moss, the junior, kind of stepped across the line. Again, I don't think she can come from the back row. I'm not, really not sure what happened there, to be honest with you, but the point went to Yuma. Moss sends it across, kept alive with the fist. That is Hansen, and the point for Yuma. 8-3, they open up the lead here. Murphy brings it across. That is Wagner. Near side down, off the block, but effective is Lindsey Moss. Trying to remember the, I think it's April Mendoza, the girl they had along with the older Moss girl, Brittany. Those two girls were just amazing on the front line when Fowler was making their three consecutive title runs. Meckelberg keeps it alive. Balky sends it across on a free ball. Actually, that was a four hit. So another point for the Fowler Grizzlies, and suddenly they are within two. And if Yuma wins this, they will need Fowler to beat Simla tomorrow to create a three-way tie for the pool top spot. That one gets through as well from Yuma. I believe that was Murphy again. Caitlin Murphy again with the kill. Coming on to serve here will be Logan Hickson, number three. She's a freshman. Bitter pops it up. Oh, sent back nicely. Moss with the big hit, but the block there, I believe, by Murphy and Hansen. Carly Corey may have been there as well, too. Again, always kind of difficult to get some of those block numbers because we're watching the ball. Moss tries it again. Again sent back. She keeps it alive, as does Yuma. Hansen keeps it in play. This is Shields with the set. Again the block. Yuma winning the battle at the, at the net right now. That was Corey and Murphy dual block. Indians stretch it back up to a five-point lead, 11-6. to six. And a six and again with that serve. Fowler keeps it alive far side. That was Brianna Hobby. Ball tipped up again by Hobby. That is Shields. Moss tries to tip it across a little bit off on her timing and we'll get a timeout for the Grizzlies. Crop Production Services wants to wish all area athletes good luck in their pursuit of a state championship. Remember to call Crop Production Services for all your fertilizer, chemical, and seed needs. Coverage also provided by Bank of Colorado. They're a bank with community ties, competitive rates, personal local service, and locations throughout the state. Find them online at bankofcolorado.com. Let's kind of check the circuit here. Stratton and Flagler, they're in game four. Flagler up two to one and leading game four, 13-12. Game uh, class 5A. Anybody read that? Heritage is out there. And Grandview tied at four in game two. Grandview took game one. Got great eyes. Class 4A, Mountain View and Thompson Valley, I believe. Thompson Valley is on the verge of taking that. They lead it two games to one on top in game four, 20 to 14. Eaton and Roaring Fork, a game apiece, and 1-1 in game three. A lot of ones there. That would be a surprise. Eaton would be the favorite there. They're the defending state champs, although they struggled down the stretch. Back to this one again, Moss miss hits. Thirteen six Yuma. Hickson continues to serve. She's had a nice little run here. 
Again, they feed Moss, trying to get her going. That one's a little bit long. Lindsay, 5'7". Not quite as big as her older sister. Tried to hit it over the top, but it went long. Hickson continues to serve. At Shields, make that Wagner that pops it up. Here's Hickson. Over to Hanson. Hobby. That was Moss that got it across. Far side. Murphy kept alive by Moss. Hanson feeds Murphy again off the block. Murphy again blocked, and this time it gets through. <clears throat> so Yuma stretching out game one here, 14 to 6. They don't look tired at all after that four setter with Simla. Playing well out of the gate. Again, they have to win, and then they need the help from Fowler, who they're playing right now. So even with the win, they've got a long road there. Hobby gets it over to Moss, who sends it packing. Here's Murphy again, and down off the block. She's had a good start to the after to the evening. 16-6, Yuma, and another timeout for the Lady Grizz. High school students can start their college education and earn high school credit through Adam State University's early college and concurrent enrollment programs. Online courses are offered throughout Colorado, and for more information, visit exstudies.adams.edu. That's exstudies.adams.edu. People also count on Farm Bureau Insurance for quality products, fast fair claim service, and insurance coverage that makes sense. That means you get the protection you need along with some of the best discounts available. People from every walk of life depend on Farm Bureau Insurance, and you can too. Colorado Farm Bureau Insurance get real coverage. All Yuma here in game one thus far, 16-6 Indians. Trying to get off onto a moving start here. Hickson still serving. They'll feed Moss. Hickson pops it up. Hanson, they'll feed Murphy again. She's had the hot hand, and it continues. I think that's eight straight, maybe nine for Yuma. Again, I don't jot those notes down. Just trying to keep up with the players. Hickson's been serving quite a long time. I do know that. Again, they feed Moss. Uses the left hand to try to get it through. I think she hit the net that time. It's another point for Yuma. <laughs> 18-6. Popped up there by Wagner. Back line off the block. Mariah Shields finally ends the run for Fowler. 18-7. I want to say 10 consecutive points by Yuma. You don't see that often in rally scoring. On the serve here is Brianna Hobby. Moss finally finds some room there. She gets that one to go down. And back to serve is Brianna Hobby. Far side, that's, that's good from Tara Traffigan. It's a good finish to that point, 19-8 Yuma. Serving there is Kalen Blotch. Fowler, a little bit long, got top spin on it. A little bit long. Sali back into the lineup. She replaces Jessica Benish, another freshman. So three of their top seven are first-year players. Serving here. Actually, that point went to Fowler. I'm sorry. It was on the serve there was Wagner. So that point went to Fowler. My mistake. That must have been tipped at the net. It sailed long, but it must have been tipped. So here's Wagner again, a junior. And sends it into the net, and it's 20 to 10, Yuma. (coughs) 
Indians haven't won a state tournament game since 2003. They lost in the semifinals to Platte Valley that year. They have just seven wins in school history at the state tournament, looking for number eight here. Four points away from their first game victory. Obviously, it wouldn't be a match victory. Popped up there by Wagner. Moss sends it deep, tracked down by Meckelberg. This is Hickson, 50-50 ball. And we get a violation on Yuma. That kind of rolled up the arm of Traffigan. <clears throat> Moss back to serve. This is Lindsey Moss, a junior. Collected by Hansen. Sent down by Traffigan. Cannot be found by Lexi Bitter. 22-11 Yuma. Hanson back to serve. She'll try to finish it off here for the Indians. Jump serve, good one. Wagner controls. Saw Lee, a little bit long, or wide, I should say. Tried to tip it over the block. It went wide. Two points away for Yuma. Their head coach is Megan Martinez. Does a good job here. Got this program pointed in the right direction. They play in a very good lower plat league. Hanson. Will set traffic and sent back by Sali. There's a little bit of good news for the Fowler Grizzlies. Sali gets up there. List her at 5'10. She's a junior. That's bitter on the serve. Hansen with the set. Kind of missed timing there with traffic. That's a spot where you can have a little error there because you're still up 10. And need just two to win. Bitter again with the serve. 5'7", freshman. Played the entire match thus far. Traffic in with the pass. Far side. And couldn't get through. That was uh, Molly Haruf. She got in the lineup untapped. I didn't see her come in. Number 10. <clears throat> Bitter's put three points together in a row. They need a bunch more to get back in it. Hansen. Sent over there by Balky. Check that. Another point for Fowler. Yeah, that is Balky there on the far side, I believe. Again, hard to see the numbers. Might be Blotch. Here's Bitter. 23-15. You've seen stranger things happen, but still a long way to go. Ooh, that one's just a tad bit long. So game point here for Yuma. And here's Balky. I tried to give her some action a little bit beforehand, but now she's on the court. And she replaces Lotch. Moss will set Sali. Meckelberg pops it up. Here's Hansen. She'll set Murphy. Played up on the line. Good job by Fowler. Oh, nope, they're going to call the violation on the net. And game one goes to Yuma. They win it 25-15 over the Fowler Grizzlies. So Yuma needing a win to stay alive. They get one. Our coverage presented in part by Viero. They offer the best coverage. 4G now here and it's fast. Find out more and how you can buy an iPhone and use it with your Viero service at Viero.com. We'll take a timeout. Game two coming up next here on Chazza TV.
Game two set to go here. Yuma took game one, 25-15. And as they get rotation set, we can tell you in class 1A, Stratton and Flagler will go to a game five. Stratton just won game four, 24-21. Here we're underway in game two. That one is sent back. The hit attempt that time by Shields, Mariah Shields. It was blocked nicely by Carla Corey. Traffigan's in there, Hansen's in there. It's like Madison Powell is on the court for Yuma. So is Dixon. The serve by Meckelberg was a little bit wide, and then also Kalen Blotch. And you get all kinds of combinations with the Yuma Indians. They rotate freely and substitute more freely. Traffigan has it blocked by Saleh, who finishes the point. Good job of that quick second jump there by the junior from Fowler. She got the block and then the kill. Bitter, the freshman, Lexi Bitter, to serve. Sends it to Meckelberg. Here's Dixon. Far side, Traffigan. Popped up by Moss. Moss will get it back from the back line. Ooh, almost a collision there. And there's a miss hit by Traffigan. Check that, Hanson. I've only been getting them mixed up all day, so why stop now? Again, one wears 12, the other one wears 13. Both wearing black headbands. Both have ponytails covering up their numbers. Other than that, it's an easy choice. There's Traffigan. She sends it long. Both are wearing black shoes, black socks, and black knee pads, too, to make it worse. And we get an early timeout for Megan Martinez and the Fowler or, uh, Yuma Indians. College in Colorado is where higher education is the key to a student's future. From improved salaries to unique experiences and greater life choices, collegeincolorado.org can help your student create a lifelong plan and explore their dreams for the future. It's collegeincolorado.org. Good sponsor of ours throughout the season here as we bring you state volleyball coverage. We'll have state basketball. we got plenty of football coverage coming your way over the next two to three weeks if we survive this weekend. 75 matches in two days on Chazza.tv. Working for Play On Sports here to produce these matches. Bitter will continue to serve early here for Fowler. Blotch has a little bit of trouble, but Meckelberg tracks it. Powell will send it across. This is Moss with the set to Sali, sent back. Traffigan gets the block there. Powell is also in the vicinity, but... Uh, that one was mostly Traffigan. Hansen to serve. Jump serve. Trying to get that match on class 4 a Coronado I'm not sure who they're playing Broomfield. Uh, Broomfield okay you got good ears too good eyes and good ears still didn't share pizza <laughs> Saul Lee will go back to serve for Fowler they lead it 5-3 to three, trailing game 1 Eaton and Roaring Fork in 3A still working through game 3 Reds with a 4 point lead match tied at 1 Good punch up there by Sali. Moss trucks it down. 50-50 ball won by Traffigan and Yuma. Class 5A, Grandview and Heritage. Grandview lead, or leads the match one zip, but Heritage leads game two, 23-18. And in 1A, game five, they played a 15. Stratton and Flagler. Stratton with the early 3-2 advantage. Bitter pops it up for Fowler. Near side, cross court. Mariah Shields, but a ball got free. And we'll get a redo. Officially a redo or a do-over. Mulligan, there you go, golf term. First golf term of the day. Moss will set. Far side, tip. That is Brit Brianna Hobby. Powder just send, or Moss just sends it across. Tip there. Stays alive. Hobby has to free ball it over. Good save by Shields on that dive. Far side. Ooh, another good dive. That's Moss. 
Kept alive, Hobby far side and sent back across Bitter. Fowler playing defense here, but they're still in the point. Punching it up is Wagner. They'll come near side. Meckleberg collects that hit. Hansen. And it hit the antenna. So that's a point for Fowler. They lead it 6-4. Heritage just took Kane Dew in 5A, so that match tied one all. We're going to get done the quickest here. Class 4A just started their last match. The other three courts still have to finish up this match and one more. So we'll put the 2A court on ice a little bit ahead of schedule here. Carly Corey, I can say on ice because they play hockey in here now. They did remove the ice for this, we appreciate. Sali, make that moss, sends it long. We're tied at six. Yuma took game one, 25-15. Traffigan with the serve. That is Shields. And Hobby finds some space for the kill. Meckelberg back on the court replacing Traffigan. On the serve for Fowler to our left is Brianna Hobby. Little 5-2 freshman. Sending it across there is Murphy. Moss tries to respond, collected by Meckelberg off the block. They'll send Murphy again near side. Good kick up there by Hobby. Moss sends it over on a second hit. Good save there by Wagner. Near side, that's Bitter. Good save by Hobby. Shields feeds Moss. Little tip, that one falls. We'll see if that gets her going. Good effort there by Hansen. And also Murphy both hit the deck. Neither could find the white volleyball. 8-6 Fowler trailing by a game. That serve goes into the net. That's Hobby. And you're going to get those kind of mistakes once in a while from a freshman bunch. And again, they play three of their top seven for first-year high schoolers. Trying to keep up that great tradition at Fowler. 13 state titles in their storied history. And again, we've only been playing volleyball competitively, if you will determining a state champion since 1976. So you're talking 13 titles in volleyball compared to football or basketball, which have been playing since the 20s. That's a little bit different. This is Moss far side. Again, a soft hit collected there. That's Corey saved by Wagner. Moss has to just kind of save it across. Dixon with the set. That is Murphy. Did it go off the hands of Fowler? Oh, Hickson went under the net. Okay. So we have a violation there for Yuma. Credit the Grizzlies with the point there. Nicole Wagner, 5'5", junior, will serve. She plays libero. You can tell that by her off jersey. Near side. Here's Hansen off the block. Good dig by Hobby. They'll send it far side to Moss, trying to get her going. That's Hansen off the block. Or that's Hansen over there, far side. And that one goes into the net. And I keep getting 12 and 15 mixed up. And also 13. Yeah, <laughs> we all have. <laughs> We're trying to take the lead here. Dixon will set Corey. Collected back line by Hobby. Again, they go to Moss. Can't get her going. Yuma blocking her very effectively. Flat-footed hit. Dug out there nicely by Blotch. Back row, Meckelberg. Ooh, got it down. Hobby Dove couldn't collect it. 10-9, Yuma. 10-6, Stratton in game five of their 1A match with Flagler. Play to 15. Moss punches it deep. Meckelberg tracks it down. And that's a good hit that time by Corey. Carly Corey, a junior, gets the kill. And a two-point lead for the Indians. So they battled back from that early deficit to take a two-point lead. Still serving is Kalen Blotch. That one will go out of bounds and another point for the Indians.
Watch serve this time goes into the net, so Fowler retakes the service. Lindsey Moss will do the honors, 5'7", junior. Hickson controls, or Hickson controls rather. And there's a kill. Nicely by Powell, Madison Powell. She's another youngster, just a sophomore. Back on the court is the freshman Traffigan. Back to serve Meckelberg. The barrel for Yuma. Hobby pops it up. Far side, that is Mariah Shields off the block and out, so the Grizzlies score the point. Still trail it by two. And Simla's already posted a win here in pool three. They're 26-0 overall. They beat Yuma in four a couple hours ago. So Yuma needs this one to keep their state tournament hopes alive. Even if they win it, they'll need some help. Traffigan punches it down quickly. Good-looking player. And just a freshman. Stratton two points away from coming back to defeat Flagler. I think they were down 2-1 in that match. And taking game five, 13-7, they need two more. Sali pushes it across. Blotch gives it to Hansen. Traffigan is blocked nicely by Sali. Sali's been the best player for Fowler so far, doing a pretty good job up front of both hitting and blocking. Keeping Fowler close in this one. They trail by two. She'll go back to serve. Hansen feeds Powell. Nice save there by Moss. Pushed across by Shields. That's Traffigan again finishes the point. They don't have heights there for Yuma, but I'm guessing she's 5'11-ish, 5'10. She's got to be 6 foot, okay. Moss will set. Near side, that Shields. She finds the court for the point, 15-13. Back to serve will be Shields. Got a hitting error there for the Indians. And that will be called before the 5A ball will stop play there that came in across. So point for the Grizzlies. They're back to within one here in game two. Probably need this one. Stay alive. Hard to come back 0-2, especially at the state tournament. We saw it last year in the 1A state finals, but doesn't happen that often. Hitting through the block with the hit that time, Caitlin Murphy for the Indians. So they keep the lead and now regain the service. Popped up by Moss. Shields will give it back to her. Moss again can't find room between the big blocks. That one's punched up by Yuma and kept alive. Shields again to Moss again. That time she powers it through, but Yuma keeps it alive and then hits it out of bounds. That's Corey. Flagler hanging tough in 1A. Scored two straight points. Still trail by three, 14-11. That's game five with Stratton. Hansen. Gives it over to Murphy, cross courts it, Moss punches it up, Hobby redirects. Here's uh, Moss, Meckelberg for Yuma. Back over to Traffigan, here's Hansen. Good dig out there by Wagner. Far side they'll go to Moss, she punches it over the top. Traffigan collects, near side. Again Murphy, Hobby with the dig. There's Bitter, the freshman, pushing it across. And that one in the net and down, so Fowler gets the point. In 1A, Stratton gets the win as they defeat Flagler three games to two. That's a good rivalry. Couldn't remember how many miles between the two on I-70, 25-ish? 20? 40? Okay. I was thinking downhill. It's not as far downhill. Oh, that's right. Siebert and Vona in between. Yuma with the one-point lead. I was thinking downhill, it's shorter miles, isn't it, than it is uphill? Going east, it's downhill mostly. I had a girl convinced of that in high school a long, long time ago. Downhill miles were shorter than uphill miles. 
Back to this one. Murphy sends it wide. Tell we're getting a little giddy here. <clears throat> Been doing these since 8 o'clock this morning. We'll do seven more tomorrow. It's a good time, though. This is one of the better events. Wagner will serve. Punches it into the net. So Fowler will retake, or Yuma will retake the lead with that service error. And onto the floor to serve for Yuma will be Kalen Blotch. We haven't had a timeout in this game, too. Point there for Fowler, so we're tied at 18. Moss back to serve for Fowler. And they trail one game zip already here as we in game two. Powell fires it for Yuma, sends it long. <clears throat> Moss again to serve. Little floater. Moss with the save with the left hand. Blotch punches it up. Here's Hickson. Traff again. It's Hansen actually just has to punch it across. Hickson again. She'll feed Hansen. Sent back. And not being able to chase it down is Blotch. 20-18 Fowler. <clears throat> Football playoffs start in about 30 minutes across the state, at least in 3A, 4A, and 5A. 2A, 1A, 8-man, and 6-man. Everything is tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Punched down hard that time. Kept alive momentarily for Fowler. But again, finishing that play was Carly Corey. Yuma back to within one with the serve. That's Sali in the middle. Powers it through the two person block and Blotch can't control it off the tip. Fowler within four points. Tight match. Here we get a timeout. 21-19 Fowler with the lead. Take a little break here. It's a chance to tell you about crop production services. They take pride in hard work and dedication much like you see with the volleyball girls on the court today as they strive to win a state championship. Crop production services extends their support and wishes best of luck to all area teams. Also, Bank of Colorado helps bring you these broadcasts. They're a bank with community ties, competitive rates, personal local service, and locations throughout the state. That's Bank of Colorado. Eaton leads a 3A match over a roaring for two games to one. They're also on top in game four, 10 7. And all the teams in 3A chasing Valley. That is a very good volleyball team there from Gilcrest. You saw them earlier today? Not big at all, but man, they just pound the rock, if you will. Hickson sets up, and there, speaking of pound, that's Tara Traffigan. We have a player slow to get up here. That's Mariah Shields for Fowler. Second time we've seen this here. Saw it in our first match. You go up the block and you just come down wrong. You couldn't land on a foot. She's okay. Sandy Moss is an intense coach for Fowler. Went out there and talked to her player. Player said, I'm okay. They stood up and gave a double high five. Yeah, they gave that point to the wrong team on the scoreboard. It is 21-20 Fowler. Yeah, that's what they're going to check. Now, because Yuma got the kill with traffic in there, she finished that point. So the Indians should have got that point. Or did they? There must have been a violation on uh, Yuma because they give it to Fowler, and they discussed it briefly. And there's another point for the Grizzlies. Sali wins the battle at the net. So 23-19. I apologize. I'm not sure what happened there. Thought Traffigan got the clean kill. Maybe she got in the net or across the line. Not sure. Serving is Lexi Bitter. Fowler Grizzly suddenly up four. That turns out to be a big point. Hickson will send it across. Wagner punches it up. Moss. There's Sally redirects. Good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nasty fall there, too. But Terrell, Terrell keeps it alive. And that one sails long off the right arm of Shields. 
Point for Yuma. Yeah, Terrell tried to track it down, and much like you see an offensive lineman in football, they got cut from the side there, and she didn't show ill effects. She didn't go down at all, but boy, her knee took a twist. Moss will play it over to Hobby. Near side, kept alive. Sally will have to free ball it across. That one is sent long. Was it tipped? Yep, they're going to say tip, so Yuma gets the point there. Katrina Terrell, the sophomore, scoring the kill. Two-point lead for Fowler. Timeout for the Grizzlies. K-12 educators can meet licensing requirements and earn advanced degrees through Adams State University distance learning. Hundreds of professional developmental courses are offered online and at a distance. For more information, visit exstudies. Dot Adams dot edu. That's exstudies.adams.edu. Norwood and Kit Carson getting set to play on the 1A court. Norwood's first action of the tournament. Kit Carson lost to defending state champion Otis in three games earlier. Grandview and Heritage in 5A tied up at one game apiece. Grandview leads game three 16-13. Court four. Broomfield and Coronado. Game one led by Coronado 22 to 16. Cougars are the defending state runners up. They lost to Cheyenne Mountain in the finals a year ago. Eaton trying to finish off Roaring Fork in four. Reds lead the match two games to one. Game four 15-11. Here Fowler's up by two. In a tight match, Bitter keeps it alive. Moss serves Sally and down. Good job by the line judge there. Elbow up to block the ball. Flag down to make the call. 24-21 game point for Fowler. Sally will try to finish it and tie this up at a game apiece. Sends it deep. That one's off the net and game two goes to Fowler. So Yuma takes game one. Fowler returns the favor in game two. Game three coming up in just a moment to wrap up the 2A state volleyball pool action for day number one. We'll have it for you next here on Chazza TV. Game three upcoming here between Fowler and Yuma. Again, they exchange sides, so Fowler in the purple. Off to your right, Yuma in the red and black to your left. Just talking about relationships here. Uh, Kerry Sherman runs our graphics here today, and he was telling me that Jeanette Lambrick, head coach currently of Kalichi, 
is a Fowler graduate, played on some of those state championship teams in the early 90s, was their setter. Another northeast to southeast connection as Fowler scores the point to open up game three. Sandy Moss, the head coach at Fowler, is the sister of Lisa Chintala, who's the AD at Fleming. Fleming trying to win both volleyball and football here. Football team favorite to win the six-man title. There's a big hit by Traffigan. No violation there. She sends that one down. And the Fleming Wildcats ladies have won two state titles, three state titles in the last six years. Something like that. They played in six straight finals. That's what it is. Traffic in again with the hit. Sali gets away with two straight hits. The first one again is considered a block. Miscommunication in the corner fire for Yuma. And so the point for the Grizzlies. Both the girls there in the corner went, oh, man, I thought you were getting that. Here's Bitter again to serve. Lexi Bitter, 5'7", freshman, one of three in the main rotation for the Lady Grizz. Traffic in again, punches it down. And she's just a freshman, folks. She is going to be outstanding. I say going to be. Two all. That is blocked back serving, I believe, number six. Another point for Yuma. Actually, that's number nine, Tristan Bauke, the senior serving for Yuma. Again, difficult for me to see their numbers way up here, especially on the front side where they're smaller. It's kind of gray against a red. That's Hobby, punched up by Meckelberg. She's easy to find with the red, a white libero shirt, and there she keeps it alive. Traffic in. Well, back down on the court twice there is Shields. She's kept it alive twice. There she sends it across. Hansen to Traffic in and down. She found the line. Four two Indians here in decisive game three. I say decisive. It won't decide the match, obviously, but one team will grab a huge advantage with a win. Moss punches it across. Hansen. Traffic in again. Yeah, double hit on the sir, uh, on the set from Molly Haruff. Trafficking is in the zone as they speak as everything she's hitting is down. Oh, that was a hitting error on Fowler. I'm sorry. That's Sali. She got it through the block and down, or to the block and down. She'll go back to serve. Murphy far side, Moss sets, that's Shields, she gets it down as Hansen can't bring it back, point for Fowler, wish we could point the cameras over to 1A, Norwood with a girl in the roster wearing those toe shoes, I don't know if there's a name for them, number 14, she did that in basketball last year, it almost looks like they're barefoot, but they are allowed, that's uh, Murphy again with the kill for Yuma. Yeah, they're little, almost like running shoes with the toes in them. And she wore them on the basketball court last year at the 1A tournament. I asked Chaz if that was legal, and they said they are now. They had that discussion. So I'm sure if you can wear them in basketball, you can wear them here in volleyball. That one's sent back, but out of bounds, so the point for Fowler. 6-4, 6-5 rather. Grizzlies will serve trailing by a point. <coughs> Murphy sends it across. Moss over to Sali, who has to just free ball. A little fist there put up by Ruff. Shields over to Fou or, uh, Moss. Murphy dug up nicely, kept alive. Can they get it over? Yes. Great effort by the Grizz. That one sent down. Moss again, or make that Shields to the turf. There's Moss. She finally gets a kill. They've been few and far between here. She got that one down, and we tied at six. We're tied at six. Well, Eaton and Roaring Fork may go to a game five. They're tied at 22 in game four. 
That's in 3A. There's a hitting error again by Yuma. Grizzlies take the lead. Murphy. Check that. That was Hanson, I believe, on that hit. Well, it might have been Murphy. Both of them over there again. I was following the ball. Back to serve is Logan Hickson. Punched up by Bitter. That's Moss. Sends a deep back corner. Hickson will set. Murphy far side. Saved up, and they, this time they can't get it over. Good job by Wagner to get down on the floor. Kept it alive the first time. Didn't have the angle to get it across. Hickson will serve again. Sent across by Hobby. Far side, they'll feed Murphy. That one's off the net and out. Oh, off the block and out. So point Yuma. Indians lead at 9-7. That one's tipped and out, so another point for the Indians. And here we go again. Hickson with a little run on the serves. We get a timeout with the Indians on top 10-7. Bank of Colorado helps you bring the bring these broadcasts to you. They're a bank with community ties, competitive rates, personal local service, and locations throughout the state. That's bankofcolorado.com. Also, Viero Wireless. They offer the best coverage throughout eastern Colorado. 4G is now here, and it's fast. Find out more at viero.com. Watch the 3A match here. If Roaring Fork scores the point, and they do, they will go to game number five with Roaring Fork and Eaton. They've still got another match after that on 3A. It's going to be a late night for those folks. Pushing 7 o'clock. Last match scheduled to start at about 6.30. So they'll probably be about 45 minutes behind schedule here at the end. Hickson again on the serve for Yuma. And Moss gets it through the block this time. Tipped but out of bounds, but still the point for the Grizzlies. Trims the lead to two. I think that's the third five-set match in 3A today. Murphy gets it across. Sent back deep. Good job by Hickson to keep that alive. There we have a net call or a line call on Traffigan. Fowler back to within one. Game two was tight all the way through. Yuma kind of took advantage of some miscues by Fowler in game one. There's another miscue. Hobby again with the serve into the net. Back to serve here for Yuma. Kalen Blotch. Hobby down to the knees to get it. Moss. Traffigan will set far side. That one finds a hole. That's Terrell, I believe. Katrina Terrell, sophomore. Moss frees it over. Hickson with the set to Traffigan. And Fowler can't get it back across. Traffic in a big weapon. She's the hitter. Hickson is the uh, setter, and they are both freshmen. Huh? Oh, Hanson with the hit. Okay, at yeah, 12, not 13. The other two are still freshmen. <laughs> Yuma's starting to stretch it out here a little bit. They lead by 5, 14, 9. So we get a timeout on the floor. Let's run around the courts here. Norwood and Kit Carson kind of midway through game one. Norwood on top, 11-10. Grandview Heritage, that be a little upset. Heritage leads two games to one. Heritage already took out Eagle Crest, the number two seed. Grandview and all that tradition. Heritage trying to do a double whammy today in pool play. 
A lot of folks would never guess that would happen. That Heritage would be the team coming out of there. You could feasibly have Grandview and Eagle Crest playing tomorrow for nothing if Heritage holds on there. They'd be the lowest seed in that pool to advance. And then you've got Coronado in Broomfield. Coronado won game one in class 4A. And they lead game two 11 to nine. Broomfield one of five teams out of the Northern Conference to make it to the 12 team bracket in 4A. Have a good shot to have 4A and 5A won by Colorado Springs schools this year. Cheyenne Mount Lewis Palmer should duke it out in the finals in 4A. That'd be a great match if it happens. And Doherty is the overwhelming favorite in 5A. They've beaten 10 state tournament teams among their 25 wins in the unbeaten regular season and postseason thus far. <clears throat> this is Blotch back with the serve. Again, her Indians on top by six. Wagner down to keep it alive. That is Shields bringing it across as bitter. Hickson with the serve. That time she went to Corey, and he was sent back nicely by the Grizzlies. Sali back on the court for Fowler. Where's number nine? That is Wagner with the serve. And she'll get the dig there. Shields punches it up. Moss across. Hickson with the set. Far side. Blocked nicely and back over by Sali. Hickson punches it deep into the corner, but Hobby's ready. Moss near side, tip sent back. Sali punches it. Moss again. Meckleburg clears. Hickson, far side. Terrell. Sali, little tip, but nice there to uh, pick it up was Hansen in the middle. That's Terrell. Nope, nope. Corey kept alive by Fowler. Up, oh, we got a violation. Where? In the net for Fowler. So Yuma with the point. That was a pretty good rally there. Yuma on top, 16-10. Meckleberg bounces it off the serve. It has to go up. We have a miss hit there by Sali. That's a tough break there. She had it tracked until it hit the net, and then that deflection causes all kinds of commotion. Meckleberg again with the serve. Moss down to one knee, set it back to her. Punches it up. Good diving save there by Blotch. There's Shields, middle, Sali. And did we go over the top? Nope. Two hits for Sali there. Neither one was a block. Meckleberg again to serve. Yuma starting to stretch out game three here, leading it by eight. Far side, Moss gets it across. Sali tries to pound it down, sends it long. Good idea. Just didn't get on top of the ball. Meckleberg continues to serve. Nice little run here for the libero on that back end. That one goes out of bounds off the block. That was Traffigan and also Terrell over there. So that ends the run there for Yuma, but they've stretched it out to an eight-point advantage. Moss with the jump serve. Meckleberg up. Hickson with it far side. Traffigan off the block. Moss controls. Sally punches it across. Far side, that's Terrell. Hickson, backside here to Hansen. That one's long. Drew the attention of the line judge on the 5A court who kind of winced. Meckleberg, this is Hickson, clears for Yuma. Wagner, Sali in the middle, blocked. But down, so point for Fowler. Good power there by Sali. Got it through Traffigan. Moss with the serve. Far side, Terrell. Pumped up by Bitter. Sali with the tap. Moss. Shields. That's Hanson. Traffigan. Moss dives. Good control by Fowler. Good communication on that back line. Sali keeps it alive. Hickson near side. Hansen down off the block and out, but a good point there for Yuma. Good effort by both teams. <clears throat> it 
Yuma by seven. That is Hanson with the jump serve. Won't quite clear the net. And Bitter back with the serve for Fowler. That one's long off the right arm of traffic and got a lot of velocity on it, but it sailed long. <clears throat> Bitter to serve again. Five A ball comes careening in, so we'll get a a mulligan, a do over. Needs to be an official volleyball term for it, especially from the state tournament. <clears throat> that one gets through from Terrell. Point for the Indians. They'll serve four points away from taking game three. Murphy back on the floor for Yuma. She replaces Blotch. Terrell also sits down. I believe Murphy is back in. I just said Murphy was in, so... Let's go with Molly Haruff on the floor as well. Diving save by Hanson. Here's Haruff feeding Murphy far side. Kind of miss hit it, but it worked to be effective as it finds the floor. I believe that's Bauke on the serve there. Traffic and down. She's got some good ups and is very long. Gets good angles on her, on her hits there. 23-15. Yuma looking and very close to taking a two games to one advantage here. Moss sets it up. Sali collected by Meckelberg. Traffic in again down off the arms of Wagner. She's a pretty good weapon for 14 years old. <laughs> Bauke again with the serve. Hobby punches it up here to Moss. Back to Hobby. Fowler's trying a lot of different hitters. They haven't had much luck with the size of Yuma. Air traffic and miss hits that one. So Fowler again takes away one game point, but it's still 24-16. This is Sali to serve. Needs it in, barely clears the net. Moss sets it back to Shields, down by Traffigan, and that's game three. Yuma takes it 25-16. We go to game four with the Indians on top, two to one. Back in a moment here on Chazza TV.
Yuma has a two games to one lead here. Again, you see on your screen, if you're just joining us, you see two numbers next to each school there on the scoreboard. First number is points in this uh, game, and the second number is number of games won in the match. So see Yuma there with a zero followed by a two. That explains the two different numbers on your screen. Moss serves to start game four for Fowler. Popped up there by Hobby. That is Shields. Hickson tracks it down. Good effort there. Traffigan sends it across. Hobby redirects, and Sali brings it back. Hickson. That's Corey. Good dig by Hobby. Tough ball, though, dug out by Moss, and Sali keeps alive. Corey. Ooh, Hobby again. A great job on that back line. And that one into the net. Tough angle there. Good effort, but just a tough angle. Talking during the break about... Uh, Tara Traffigan in the young freshman number 13 for Yuma. We're guessing she's the younger sister of Austin Traffigan, who's an offensive lineman with the University of Wyoming. And I haven't looked in the Yuma phone book under T, but I don't think there's too many Traffigans. Like you said, they've got to be related if they're not brother and sister. Good battle at the front there by Sali and Traffigan. Tara will send it across. I want to know how tall mom and dad are if you've got a 6'1 freshman girl and an O lineman in college. I remember talking to uh, Mike Breckheis with Colorado Springs Christian. He used to coach the Lions during their great run in volleyball here a few years back. There is traffic in finishing that point with Yuma. His daughter is 6'5", playing currently with the University of Nebraska, Megan Breckheis, I think. And she's not the tallest kid in the, in the room. He's got an older brother who's Taylor Breckheis, who's 6'8". And I was interviewing Mike on the phone. I said, how tall are you? He said, about 6'1". I said, where do they get their height from? He says, well, mom's about 6'2". So it does run into family there as Yuma gets another point to take a lead here at 4-1. And I joke, state volleyball tournament is where I come to feel short. I'm about 5'10 and look up to most of the players anymore. Hobby. Punched up there by Terrell. That is Hanson, I believe. Sali with the swing. She wound up for that one with the power and got it through. Yuma leads game four here, 4-2. The match, 2-1. Again, if Yuma wins this one, sets up the possibility of a three-way tie here in pool number three. If Yuma goes on to win this and then Fowler would upset Simla tomorrow, all three teams would be 1-1 one one at the conclusion of pool play. Get a whistle here. Yuma into the net, so point Fowler. But they move to this three-team pool setup to expand the number of teams that are here. We go from 8 to 12 this year. And they also wanted to reduce the number of tiebreakers that we had to play because it seemed like there were always a couple of pools that had some sort of tiebreaker. That pushed the semifinals back up against the finals, and you didn't get much of a break between your semifinal matches and your championship match, and they kind of want to reset the arena for the finals and with all those tiebreakers sometimes it was a hurried job there comes a ball from 3A in over the net and down so we'll get a mulligan and again we had someone on the website ask about what are they going to do with tiebreakers and I said well we had 52 regionals played last weekend without a tie so hopefully we'll get through the state tournament as well. And we knocked on wood. Moss tracked it down, but it went outside the antenna. So that's a violation, and Yuma gets the point. They lead at 6-3. Again, I like this format. We see quality teams here, a little bit deeper field. Gives these strong leagues that we often discuss a chance to send more teams to the tournament. Whereas in the past, it was kind of one and done in regionals. 
Fowler's a great example of that. Last year unbeaten going into regionals, stumbled there, and didn't get a chance to win a fourth consecutive state title. That one gets through the block nicely. I believe that was bitter. This is um, Mariah Shields, a junior on the serve. That one's into the net from Murphy. So Fowler draws to within two. Again, they trail two games to one in the match. I didn't see who won that 3A match. He went to game five, and it was tied 12-12 with Eaton and Roaring Fork, and didn't see who got the win. That one is out of bounds, so point for Fowler. <clears throat> Both these coaches have a lot of energy on the sideline. Sandy Moss for Fowler paces about 16 miles there left and right, and Megan Martinez the same, and she does a lot of bouncing it with an excitement to follow the play here. Moss. Off the block, that's Meckelberg. Hansen to traffic, and she's just been overpowering here of late. <clears throat> She'll go back to serve. Bitter one hands it up to Shields. Hobby floats it across and gets the point. Couldn't be handled that time by Tristan Balke. Trafigan takes a seat in favor of the libero, Kiera Meckelberg. Another loose ball from 5A. Hobby with the serve. That's Wagner punches it up. They'll work to Moss far side. Meckelberg punches it up. They'll come near side. I believe that's Murphy. And she'll get it basically down. Wagner got a hand on it, but couldn't pop it up high enough. Yuma on top, 9-7. In to serve. Kind of their ace is Logan Hickson. She has 37 aces coming in to the tournament. <clears throat> She's had a couple of good runs in this match where she served five or six points in a row twice. That's Hanson. Far side again, they'll go to Moss. Little tip is covered up nicely by Hickson. They'll come near side Murphy. Middle of the floor, that is Hobby. Yep. Fowler again, or uh, Moss tries to punch it through. Murphy again gets this one down. Three point lead for the Indians. They would like to close it off here. Well, that's going to be a tough night in the hotel room if they win this one and have to wait until tomorrow to see if they play on. Got a lift call there on Yuma. Point goes over to the Grizzlies. Sali back in. She replaces Jessica Benish. Haven't said her name a lot, but she's been spot duty there. Another freshman in that Grizzly lineup. They pretty much stayed with seven in their rotation, and it's a young seven. I said three freshmen. I only see one senior on the, on the roster, and she hasn't seen action. Sali is a junior. Shields and Wagner are also juniors, so virtually their entire team will be back. There's a little miscommunication as the ball falls harmlessly to the tile. See who goes back to serve here. This one will be Blotch. Moss controls. They give it back to her on the kill, and that's in. Bounced bounced in and then off the knee of our line judge there so again he had a great angle at it oh we called that out yeah I guess flag is up that's out Kevin you should know that here seven matches in there's again a little miss hit here we'll probably get a timeout with Fowler yeah it looks like a little loss of concentration for the Grizzlies and head coach Sandy Moss recognizes that her team down five in game four and down two one in the match College in Colorado, like to give thanks to them. Been a good sponsor of us over the years. Higher education, the key to a student's future from improved salaries to unique experiences. Also, greater life choices. Collegeincolorado.org can help your student create a lifelong plan and explore their dreams for the future. That's collegeincolorado.org. 
Norwood took game one in the 1A match, so they lead Kit Carson one zip and 11-7 in game two. 5A, Heritage and Grandview in a dogfight there in game four. Ooh, off the face there. But Grandview with the lead in game four, 23-21, so we may see a fifth set there. 4A, Coronado continues to lead Broomfield two games to none, tied at nine in game three. And in 3A, not underway between Gunnison and Colorado Springs Christian. Gunnison, I think, in the state tournament for the first time in their history. Don't have the 3A notes in front of me, but I think that's true. They were the champs of the Western Slope. Beat Roaring Fork head-to-head and then won the conference by that game. That one falls out of bounds, so point for the Grizzlies. And again, we missed it. I apologize for that, but Eaton and Roaring Fork were tied two games all and 12-12 in game five, and then we focused on our match. Moss with the serve. That's Hanson. Over to Corey. Up, oh, miscommunication on the Yuma side. Late in the day, it's been a long weekend already for the girls, and you're going to see mental lapses here and there. Tomorrow may be even more of them. Yuma, again, this is their last pool match. They won't see action tomorrow unless it's in a tiebreaker or somehow into a semifinal match, depending. Sali with the tip, it falls. So we're getting a lot of soft volleyball here, but it's working for both teams, actually, and now Yuma takes a timeout, and their head coach, Megan Martinez, wants to talk it over. Again, Yuma came into the tournament 16-9, and dropped a four-setter to Simla in their first pool match. They were the third-place team out of the lower Platte League, a 2-1A and uh, 1A conference up in northeast Colorado. They lost to Akron in Kalichi in league play to drop into third, but both those teams again at the state tournament. Akron, in fact, one of the favorites to win 2A. Kalichi, of course, will be in the mix in 1A as they upset top-ranked Weldon Valley in the regionals. Last week, Kalichi, the two-seed behind Weldon Valley, who got that one seed based on wildcard points. There is one thing I'd like to see changed in the format a little bit to make the regional tournament championship worth something because Weldon Valley lost in regionals but still got the number one seed. I understand it's a full season of play, but got to make that regional champion worth something in, in my opinion. Again, it's the first year. They'll probably tweak as we go, but I like the expanded format. Fowler serving down two here. Moss floats it across. Meckleberg plays it over. Sali winds up it off the block. Hickson will feed Hansen, and she'll get the kill. 14-11 Yuma. Meckelberg to serve. Hobby controls. Here's Moss. Far side bitter, or near side bitter, and they'll score the point as Meckelberg couldn't control the hit very well. Kind of moved Moss into the center role here. She's had trouble playing against the bigs of uh, Yuma. And they've got a size advantage, three, four, five inches in a couple of different spots. So Moss has kind of moved over and starting to set shields and bitter and Sali. There is Trafficking with the kill. She's going to stay in the hitting position, I presume. 15-12, Yuma with the advantage. This is Hansen back to serve. Starting to figure those three out, and we're about done with Yuma tonight. <clears throat> Sali again really winds up. Brings that arm way back and gets a lot of power and drives it to the floor. Wagner takes a little break. I believe that's the first time the libero's been out. Okay. 5A matches a dandy. Heritage now leads Grandview 25-24 in game four. Eagles lead it two games to one. If they score this point, they are in the semis. They took out number two Eagle Crest earlier. That one's long. Grandview stays alive. 25 all in game four. They're down 2-1. The Wolves, great volleyball tradition there. They played, I believe, in six of the last seven big school finals. This is Moss serving Shields. Hansen will play to trap again. Good save there by Wagner. Brief break for the libero back in there. 
Popped up nicely by Bitter. That Shields and blocked down by Traffigan. Also in that area was Murphy. Again, difficult to say who got the, the actual block, but it went down on the Fowler side for the point with the Indians. That one go wide. That was in. Heritage stays alive. 26 all. We have a timeout, of course, on our court. Yuma with the lead by four, trying to finish this off. Trying to keep an eye on 5A as well. 26-26 in game four. Heritage will serve. Trying to finish off this match here. <clears throat> Grandview with the point. We'll keep an eye on that one. Again, if Heritage wins that, they're into the semifinals. Taking out Eagle Crest and Grandview back-to-back -back in pool play. Not sure Heritage has been to the Final Four in volleyball. I'd have to check that out, too. Back to our 2A match. Heritage just won, didn't they? Nope, Grandview just won. My mistake. Go to game five over there. That was Murphy with the hit. They'll feed Shields here, popped up by Hansen. And that one won't call the net. So point for the Grizzlies off Murphy's miscue. Going to game five. I got my teams mixed up over there. Grandview won that 28-26. So we'll go to game five. On the serve here for Fowler is Mariah Shields. Center deep. That's traffic in. Yes, down off the hit. As Wagner could not control. 18-14 Indians. She'll go back to serve. Not sure what happened. Oh, yeah. Heaven forbid we mix a 5A ball with a 2A ball. So they had to flip-flop there. Far side is Moss. She'll send that long. It's had a tough afternoon hitting. Shields pops it up. That's Hobby from the back. And that'll get down as Yuma can't track it down. Four-point lead. Do you know that they mark the volleyballs by class? Do, you, do they mark the volleyballs by class? Do you know? I see the ball boys over there kind of spinning around looking for something. And they swap balls there with Traffigan and kept it on the 5A court. Corey finds room there. That one will get down. Carly, Carly Corey, a junior. 20 to 15 Indians. Back to serve will be Logan Hickson. A little freshman. Does a great job serving as we talked about earlier. Twenty-one fifteen Yuma. Wagner pops it up. Here's Shields. She'll feed, uh, feed Moss. Hansen collects. Murphy will send it over. Maybe, maybe not. Second straight time she's had one kind of cling to the net and fall on the wrong side for her. Sali back in to replace Jessica Benish again. Sali plays up front. Tallest player on the Grizzlies roster. Listed at 5'10". Near side is Hansen. That one into the net. Fowler stays to within four. That one sails wide. Hobby couldn't keep it in play there from the back. 22-17 Yuma. On to serve here will be Kalen Blotch. Ali kind of mistimed her jump, but still got it across. Hobby pops it up in the back. Far side again, they go to Moss. And diving stop or save there by Meckelberg. Hobby pops it up again. Over to Shield, same routine. Moss off the block and out, so point for the Grizzlies. They're trying to stay alive and force a game five. 
trailing by five. Need to run some points here. Moss with the serve. Lodge pops it up back row. This is Terrell. Finds some space along the line. Yuma two points away from getting their pool match win and keeping their hopes alive. They would be slim hopes, but they would be hopes. That's bitter. Over to Moss. Sali tipped. Moss gets it back. Tried to quickly get it across. Got the net got in the way, but it went through. That's Shields. Tough ball there for both teams, really. Fowler collects. Shields tips. Saved up by Traffigan. Here's Hickson. Far side, Hansen. Popped up by Moss to Shields. Sali with the tip. Good save by Traffigan. Hickson tripped over and kept it alive. Meckelberg with the save. Far side, bitter. Meckelberg, great rally here by both teams. Far side, Hansen. Again saved by Moss. And then the miss hit there by Shields. You worry about fatigue, game four in such a long rally, but here it is, match point for the Yumi Indians. That was a great rally. Meckelberg to serve. Hobby from the back. Here's Moss. They look for Sali, blocked back by Traffigan. Yuma gets the win. Three games to one. Let's set the scene for you tomorrow here in pool three. Yuma is done with pool play. They are one and one. Fowler, they play Simla tomorrow. Fowler 0 and 1, Simla 1 and 0. If Simla wins, obviously they are the pool champion and they would advance into the semifinals to play the pool two champ, which will be either Swink or Peonia. If Fowler comes back from this loss and hands Simla their first loss of the year, then you have three teams all tied at 1-1. One and one. That Simla-Fowler match, third of the day, scheduled for 11 o'clock tomorrow. That's going to wrap up our coverage from the 2A State Volleyball Tournament, day number one here at the Denver Coliseum. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock here on Shazza TV.